Good day, college football fans. This is gamblersworld.net college preview for November 9th. I'm your host, Chip Cherimbus, Las Vegas Hilton world champion. And with me, we have special guests today, not only Paul Bovey, who certainly makes the rounds at all the books in Las Vegas, but one of his competitors in the big contest out here in Las Vegas at Circa, and that is Scott Pritchard. Scott, who came in third last year at the Circa Invitational. Congratulations, Scott. And I understand you're in the running once again this year. And one of your big competitors is Paul Bovey. Paul, are you still alive in the Survivor Contest? Oh, yeah, I have two. I have two. And as I was mentioning on the previous show, it's a very difficult week just because the masses will be on the uh, on the uh, L.A. Chargers. You know what happens to the masses? They turn out to be you know what. So, yes, I don't nope. know. I have to I have to work out the math to see if it makes sense to use one of my plays on the Chargers. But there's certainly a consideration and as far as the rest of the board, it looks very competitive. So I am live in Survivor. We're down to 141 only. So uh, the, the value on these tickets is quite substantial. But we'll see how it goes, and I'm hoping for the best. Okay, now, Scott, you've been pounding the Las Vegas books for three decades now. You're sitting there winning money on these big contests. The circuit contest the greatest contest in Las Vegas, of course. Uh, the million dollar contest. Are you still alive in Survivor or are you just at the Golden Nugget? Uh, you said you were sixth, I believe, overall right now? Last year in the Golden Nugget contest, I was fortunate to take sixth place. But uh, right. Chip, to your point, right now I'm in second place out of 157 contestants in the Golden Nugget contest. But thank you so much for bringing up the Circus Survivor because I was slaughtered after week two. I had not one entry, but 10. And wow. what I can do, Paul Bobby can do better. So it's very impressive out of 14,200 plus contestants that he's still in the running at this late date. But I do want to say, Chip, I love Derek Stevens. I love the Circa right. Sportsbook because they have what they call an empathy package. And I'm thinking, where was this when I was going through my second divorce? An empathy <laughs> package. Are you kidding me? They're giving me four days, three nights at the Circa Thanksgiving weekend. It only cost me $10,000, and I can't wait to sign up again next year. So I think it's a great idea. All right. Now, Paul, this is the Survivor Contest, of course, is one pick, NFL. You can't repeat with the same team. So a lot of people actually work from the back end of the schedule up forward because you have to make picks on Thanksgiving. You have to make picks um, on Christmas. Um, you know, that Golden Nugget Contest is a little bit different because you get to seven picks, am I right, um, Scott? And it could be college or pro. And are totals included in that as well? No, those point are just spreads only. College okay. and pro point spreads, no totals. Yeah, I, you know, I, I considered myself a college aficionado in a, in a way. And last year I entered that contest. And I'm telling you, after week three, the colleges had done me in. I had no shot. <clears throat> Congratulations. It's not easy picking seven games, college or pro, either way. But we've got some great college games matched up here. But before I go, I want to make one more comment from you guys. You know, they've come out with the um, the rankings of the top 12 teams that are supposedly going to be qualified. And one thing we've noticed, and um, Paul and, and Scott, that you may be ranked in the top four, but yet that does not necessarily you're going to mean you're going to get a bye when this tournament starts because the four top conference championships are getting the buys. So you may not be in the top four. You may be in the top four and actually not get a bye. Do um, you think that's fair, Paulie? I, I don't know. I, honestly, um, and I hate to plead ignorance, I really don't look at these rankings yeah. at this point because to me, they're kind of irrelevant. The only thing that counts is w what the rankings are on December 1st. Right. So I'm, I'm much more dialed in to picking point spread winners and looking at obscure conferences that nobody's paying attention to rather than rankings that are going to change ultimately. Right based on the wins and losses of these teams going forward. Scott, do you think it's valid for them to be taking conference champions when there may be a team ranked higher and this team's not going to get the buy? It's a fair question, and respectfully, I don't care if it's fair, if it's not <laughs> fair, because I'm always looking for an unfair advantage. Right. So yep. to me, just put out two teams, let me handicap the game, let me bet it, right. and hopefully, ultimately, I'll see the cashier. All right, right now they have Oregon, Georgia, Miami, and BYU most likely to get the, the buys. Texas is the number five. And the odd man out right now is SMU at 13. 
LSU 15, Mississippi 17. That may change if Mississippi comes up big against Georgia this week. A lot of big games in, in contention, and that Georgia-Mississippi is one of them. And um, I'd like to talk about it. Georgia comes up a meager two-and-a-half-point favorite against his Ole Miss team that uh, was supposed to, um, let's just say they had 19 guys returning. They were supposed to be a little bit better than 7-2 at this time. I think people were a little disappointed with them. Scott, do you think Mississippi has enough firepower to overcome this Georgia team, which has been kind of like – lackluster the entire season. Georgia is favored on the road for a reason, but to your question, I think Ole Miss has more than enough right. firepower. The question is defensively, can they stop anyone? Dart, I mean, I know that Georgia will attempt to slow down, negate Dart, who's been throwing darts at a board as far as yeah, uh, yeah. passing. I mean, points mean more than opinions, but this is a short number. It's two and a half. Right now, Circa has three dog 15. So if you like that key number of three, you have to lay an extra five cent juice, but it might be valid. Again, I think Mississippi has a real shot to pull off the mild upset here at home. Uh, I like Mississippi plus the points here, Chip. Okay. Well, you know, the the odds maker, I mean, the way we look at this Mississippi prolific offense, you would think they, um, they're they a high-scoring team, and yet only three of their last ten have gone over, Paul. And I think the bookmaker has made adjustments to the total on this team. George has only covered three of their last ten. Um, number one passing offense belongs to the Rebels. Number two offense altogether. Um, how do you see this game um, matching up, Paul? You think uh, Georgia's defense are going to be able to stifle the Rebels? Well, um, Georgia has taken a step back. They lost a lot yep. of quality offensive talent. I mean, Bowers is not there anymore, and there's several other offensive cogs that were driving this, uh, driving Carson Beck. I, I, I just, if I have a lean here, it would have to be Mississippi taking the points. I'm not a huge fan of Georgia right. this year, and laying points on the road to me is getting in deep with the Bulldogs, so I would lean uh, taking Mississippi. All right, you know, Mississippi, number two overall in total offense, 550 yards a game. They're averaging number one, 7.7 yards per play, and that's pretty tough to stop over a long run, but can their defense hold up with Georgia? Will Georgia's defense come up big here? I have a tendency to think that this game, because it means so much to both teams, is going to be a defensive affair before it'll be an offensive affair. Now, one of the other main games out there in the SEC, and, you know, we just talked about an SEC game. And, um, Paul, I'll come at you first. Alabama's at LSU, but there's an interesting note among SEC teams. And, Scott, I know your number, Scott. You might be aware of this, too. They played 40 two games and the underdog is 29 and 13. And now we have Alabama, which has come up two and a half, is now three at LSU. LSU, of course, uh, has been in and out with their get their A&M game and their Mississippi game. They won at home. They lost on the road. And Alabama, with two losses, has no room to falter here. So this is another uh, instance where I, I just think you're getting in deep, laying points on the road with the Tide. They, yeah. they haven't been this good this year. I could go back to that uh, South Florida game at the beginning of the year. They think they won the game 42 to 16. They actually should have lost. And this is not a very good football team, South Florida. I mean, they, the pass defense has been horrific. So they have been erratic the entire year. LSU is home. And I have to side with the, uh, the home dog here. I'm going to go LSU. All right, now that Alabama's won eight, won eight of the last 10, covering six of, of the last 10 meetings, um, LSU is 4-0 at home. And, Scott, you think they come up big in, in this big rivalry game, which uh, they seem to struggle with year in and year out? I really am excited about this game, Alabama taking on LSU. You're talking about a distinct home field advantage for the Tigers of LSU. But I look at Alabama, and I think they're going to be able to run. They're going to be able to pass. The thing that concerns me about the Crimson Tide is they tend to self-sabotage. They tend to beat themselves when they struggle. I'm talking about turnovers. I'm talking about untimely penalties. LSU, the problem with the Tigers I've often said, college pro football, if you can't run, you cannot win. I love teams that can run and pound the ball, but LSU, they really struggle to move the ball offensively in the trenches trying to establish a running game. The good news for LSU, they can pass. They average about 250 yards per game in the air. So my play on this game, Chip and Paul, boys and girls, members of the jury, over Red Rover, 
points will be cheaper than your prom dates perfume. <laughs> Paul, uh, Scott, I haven't agreed with you here. By the way, you can get Scott's games at Pritchard's Picks. Is that correct, Scott? Yeah, Pritchard'sPicks.com. Pritchard'sPicks.com. And he is one of the top handicappers out here in Las Vegas. And he actually backs his actions. He's a professional sports better. All right. Now, that LSU game in Alabama is really of great interest. But in the West, they're very, very interested in a game here where there's been a 23-point difference and the point spread, which was put out during the summer, actually 24 points on this game compared to the line where it is now. And I'm talking about BYU as a four-point favorite. And over the summer, they had Utah as a 21-point favorite entering this game. And Utah may be one of the most overrated and disappointing teams we've seen the entire year, defensively and offensively. BYU, of course, 8-0 and straight up, 7-1 against the number. Six of their last eight games have gone over the total. What do you think here, Paulie? Uh, well, look, everybody is waiting for the shoe to drop for BYU, but this may be a replica of 1981 when they won the national championship game and somehow made it through undefeated. Do I think they're going to make it through undefeated? No, I don't, because I do believe the shoe will drop and they'll eventually fail and, uh, and, and lose a football game. Do I think it's going to be here? I think it's going to be closer than people expect. Right. Remember, I, Utah has been a huge disappointment. We all know what's happened with the quarterback. But uh, this is an in-state rivalry. Uh, BYU has uh, stumbled along the way but managed to emerge victorious. I, I believe they played Kansas State, and the numbers were really skewed uh, towards the Wildcats, but somehow they managed to blow them out. But So I'm going to look for a – a close to the vest game here. I'm going to look for Utah to stay close and for the game to go under the total. All right. You know, Scott, I opened by saying BYU six and two to the over. Well, guess what? Utah's one six and one to the under. You're a totals guy. I know that. Um, how do you see this game? Do you have a side or a total? I'm leaning on the total in this contest, and I want to reference uh, Paul Bovey's point because he talked about the BYU team from 1981 national champions. I was a junior in high school at the time, and I'm thinking Ty Detmer might have been the quarterback, but I'm going back again about 100 years ago because <laughs> it was 100 years ago, or at least it feels like it. But when I look at this uh, matchup, BYU, to your point, 8-0, and 7-1 uh, and one versus the number. They played near – flawless football up to this point. Utah, they've underperformed. They've underachieved. They are at home. The line opened four and a half, total 41 and a half. And right now it's four, 40 and a half. I like the under. And here's why. Last one, the most recent outing for the Utes, they lost 17-14 to Houston. The good news is they only gave up 17 points. The bad news is they could not score. They've been yeah. inconsistent, erratic, average at best offensively. I think at home, that doesn't happen. That doesn't just change overnight. And BYU up to this point, they've been flawless. So I think points will be at a premium. Under 40 and a half is my play. You know, I, I can see that, you know, uh, Utah's only covered two of their last 10. They've scored in their last four games, Scott, 14, 7, 19, and 10. And this is college football. That, that's really horrible. Uh, meanwhile, while BYU is averaging 35 points a game, fourth, I mean, 410 yards offensively. But the key to BYU's success the entire season has been their 18 takeaways, which lead the nation. Um, this is the holy war. And because it is, and that's what it's considered out there, um, I have to take the, the points and the home underdog here. All right, this is gamblersworld.net. I am Chip Trimbus. We have Paul Bovey and Scott Pritchard here, Las Vegas experts. Log on, follow the buy links. And with Scott, of course, you have to go to Scott Pritchard Picks and get his winners. And believe me, you won't regret it. All right, we're here right now. Don't forget to give us a like so you can get these college previews for, from us every single week. I'm Chip Cherimbus, and um, I'm saying follow the buy links. Go to gamblersworld.net. We have 14 of the top 15 handicappers in the country, and we're looking to make it 15 with Scott. So you take care. Bet with your head and not over it, as they say in New York. Good luck, everyone.